as we explore the different types of asynchronous tools, I found in a book by Tony Bates, Teaching in a Digital Age, something called the ADI model, or AD model. And it's an acronym, A-D-D-I-E. And basically, it's a framework that can help to guide uh, the rollout or the implementation of an online presence. And I found that it was very fitting because that is a challenge that my my community college is, is faced with in terms of rolling out the Moodle technology. It's already paid for. We already have the server. It's just a matter of having a comprehensive launch. Now, in the ED model, A stands for analyze and what Mr. Bates is recommending is that those persons that are responsible, the administrators, uh, they should identify all the variables and and look and see how exactly, what angle are we going to be focusing on for this online delivery. We have already focused on Moodle based on the types of financial resources we had available and the output that Moodle can provide. Now, in terms of design, when looking at the design, uh, you should take a number of things into consideration, um, such as what type of content are you going to be putting within that course and what are the objectives for those particular instructors and is <coughs> the different ways in which uh, a Moodle space can be arranged, for example, if that's the chosen uh, modality, uh, what particular arrangement will be most effective. Now, in terms of developing, uh, we need to look at how it is we're going to populate that content. Now, if it is that we're going to ask staff, or faculty rather, to populate the LMS, the Learning Management System, we need to ensure that they are well equipped and know how to populate their space with content. And so in that case, um, the training would have to proceed the development. Alternatively, uh, a support staff can help to um, build the content based on the information provided by the instructor. But I really believe that uh, it's more effective if the instructor has a hands-on approach uh, with the actual development of the content. Now, so this development segment would encompass things such as um, we're going to focus on um, OERs or uh, instructors going to create their content from scratch. And also, as an institution, we should not be in in violation of the fair use policy or copyright infringement. Now finally you have implementation and evaluation. In the case of implementation uh, you're simply going to let the, the rollout roll. You're going to give it a chance to to operationalize and a part of that operation, um, part of it being operational is the training of faculty and staff to ensure that everyone knows what they should be doing. And also the students should also be briefed to ensure that they know how to navigate the online space. Now, because children today are oftentimes referred to as digital natives, it may be easier for them to grasp um, how exactly it should be navigated, but it is still helpful to have that that training session available for them, especially those who may need it. And then finally, evaluation. Evaluation leads to improvement, and it's how we grow as professionals. And the schematic I found is very helpful. Basically, it shows a guide of those five steps for ADI, ADI, um, and it, it gives tips and guides as to how we move along with the implementation. So you see here, A for Analyze, it has next to it different components that we would want to focus on 
as we initiate with this first step of analyzing the environment okay um notice here it has identify learning spaces and devices so we need to look at yes if we're going to be using Moodle what spaces do we have available and I think that this is the issue that we're having at uh, my college because the amount of computers available um, compared to the student population size uh, it is inadequate so students are using their cell phones a lot to gain access to online content so in this analysis we have to ensure that once we get to the design segment that it is designed in such a way to allow um, convenient mobile access and the design incorporates those types of factors next you have the development and in development uh, you are going to be conducting testing putting everything in place ensuring that the copyright is in place all of those factors in implementation we are preparing our instructors as well as our learners and I feel like at my see we attempted to train faculty before but it it wasn't a very effective in making it stick in a widespread way uh, that's because we made it optional for those who would like to start with the Moodle um, component but I think in the future it may transition from being optional to mandatory so we need to ensure that um, faculty as well as learners have an understanding and we cannot be resistant to feedback so we should allow embed within those spaces opportunities for students to describe how they feel about the particular system and give suggestions for its overall improvement and I found that in conclusion um, despite the obstacles that we have at uh, my college in terms of not having enough support staff to help to provide background for people who are trying to navigate the online space despite that obstacle I believe that the adding model can be helpful uh, for when we do decide to roll out um, and enforce the recommendation of using Moodle so I think the, the adding model will be very helpful.